Hello, and welcome to the Fighting Moose Podcast. I'm your host and narrator, Jason Hendrickson. This is a podcast where I retell stories, some fictional and some historical, that can be enjoyed by people of all ages. Right now, I am reading a book about Ernest Shackleton's voyage with his crew to Antarctica aboard the ship Endurance. This is the second book I have read about this voyage, and I feel like every time I read something about voyaging or exploring, I am always intrigued. Now, after reading about what these explorers went through in order to survive, it's crazy to think they did survive, but I'm sure the bonds that were formed during this adversity lasted to the rest of their lives. So today, I went in search of a story about this voyage, but I found two books, and I couldn't decide which book I wanted to use, as the first book was Shackleton's account of what happened, and then the second book was written by a crew member, but referenced back to Shackleton's book. So, I went in search of another story, and I found one about the English fighting the French back when we, the United States of America, were fighting the British for our independence. So today we are going to read the story, A Famous Fight Between an English and a French Frigate, from the book The Junior Classics, Volume 7, Stories of Courage and Heroism, with the story being written by Rev. W. H. Fritchett, and the book being edited by William Patton. Now, I don't know if I will ever get to Antarctica, but hopefully if I do, I can make it out of there without repeating what Ernest Shackleton and his crew had to go through. However, if I ever get stranded, whether it be Antarctica or a deserted island, hopefully I will have a good book or some books. Now, let's turn to today's story. I hope you enjoy. Let's begin. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Famous fight between an English and a French frigate. One of the most famous frigate fights in British history is that between the Arethusa and La Belle Poulet, fought off Brest on June 17, 1778. Who is not familiar with the name and the fame of the saucy Arethusa? Yet there is a curious absence of detail as to the fight. The combat, indeed, owes its enduring fame to two somewhat irrelevant circumstances. First, that it was fought when France and England were not actually at war, but were trembling on the verge of it. The sound of the Arethusa's guns, indeed, was the signal of war between the two nations. The other fact is that an ingenious rhymester, scarcely a poet, crystallized the fight into a set of verses in which there is something of the true smack of the sea and an echo, if not of the cannon's roar, yet of the rough-voiced mirth of the forecastle. And the sea fight lays embalmed, so to speak, and made immortal in the sea song. The Arethusa was a stumpy little frigate, scanty in crew, light in guns, attached to the fleet, of Admiral Keppel, then cruising off Brest. Keppel had it perplexed. Keppel had as perplexed and delicate a charge as was ever entrusted to a British admiral. Great Britain was at war with her American colonies, and there was every sign that France intended to add herself to the fight. No fewer than 32 sail of the line and 12 frigates were gathered in Brest Roads, and another fleet of almost equal strength in Toulon. Spain, too, was slowly collecting a mighty armament. What would happen to England if the Toulon and Brest fleets united, 
were joined by a third fleet from Spain, and the mighty array of ships thus collected swept up the British Channel. On June 13, 1778, Keppel with 21 ships of the line and three frigates, was dispatched to keep watch over the Brest fleet. War had not been proclaimed, but Keppel was to prevent a junction of the Brest and Toulon fleets, by persuasion if he could, but by gunpowder in the last resort. Keppel's force was much inferior to that of the Brest fleet, and as soon as the topsails of the British ships were visible from the French coast, two French frigates, the La Corne and La Belle Poulet, with two lighter craft, bore down upon them to reconnoiter. But Keppel could not afford to let the French admiral know his exact force, and signaled to his own outlying ships to bring the French frigates under his lee. At nine o'clock at night, the Lacorn was overtaken by the Milford, and with some rough sailorly persuasion and a hint of broadsides, her head was turned towards the British fleet. The next morning, in the gray dawn, the Frenchman, having meditated on affairs during the night, made a wild dash for freedom. The America, an English 64, double that is the Lacorn size, overtook her and fired a shot across her bow to bring her to. Longford, the captain of the America, stood on the gunwale of his own ship, politely urging the captain of the Lacorn to return with him. With a burst of Celtic passion, the French captain fired his whole broadside into the big Englishman, and then instantly hauled down his flag so as to escape any answering broadside. Meanwhile, the Arethusa was in eager pursuit of the Bella Poulet, a fox terrier chasing a mastiff. The Belle Poulet was a splendid ship with heavy metal and a crew more than twice as numerous as that of the tiny Arethusa. But Marshall, its captain, was a singularly gallant sailor, and not the man to count odds. The song tells the story of the fight in an amusing fashion. Come all you jolly sailors, whose hearts are cast in honor's mold, while England's glory I unfold, huzzah to the Arethusa. She is a frigate tight and brave, as ever steamed the dashing wave. Her men are staunch to their favorite launch, and when the foe shall meet our fire, sooner than strike will all expire on board the Arethusa. On deck five hundred men did dance, the stoutest they could find in France. We, with two hundred, did advance on board the Arethusa. Our captain hailed the Frenchman, Ho! The Frenchman then cried out, Hello! Bear down do ye see to our admiral's lee. No, no, says the Frenchman, that can't be. Then I must lug you along with me, says the saucy Arethusa. As a matter of fact, Marshall hung doggedly on the Frenchman's quarter for two long hours, fighting a ship twice as big as his own. The Belle Poulet was eager to escape. Marshall was resolute that it should not escape, and, try as he might, the Frenchman, during that fierce two hours' wrestle, failed to shake off his tiny but dogged antagonist. The Arethusa's masts were shot away, its jib-boom hung a tangled wreck over its bows, its bulwarks were shattered, half its guns were dismounted, and nearly every third man in its crew struck down. But still it hung with quenchless and obstinate courage on the Belle Poulet's quarter, and by its perfect seamanship and the quickness and the deadly precision with which its lighter guns worked, reduced its towering foe to a condition of wreck almost as complete as its own. The terrier, in fact, was proving too much for the mastiff. Suddenly the wind fell, 
With topmasts hanging over the side and canvas torn to ribbons, the Arethusa lay shattered and moveless on the sea. The shot torn but loftier sails of the Belle Poulet, however, yet held wind enough to drift her out of the reach of the Arethusa's fire. Both ships were close under the French cliffs, but the Belle Poulet, like a broken winged bird, struggled into a tiny cove in the rocks, and nothing remained for the Arethusa but to cut away her wreckage, hoist what sail she could, and drag herself sullenly back under jury masts to the British fleet. But the story of that two-hours heroic fight, maintained against such odds, sent a thrill of grim exultation through Great Britain. Menaced by the combination of so many mighty states, while her sea dogs were of this fighting temper, what had Great Britain to fear? In the streets of many a British seaport, and in many a British forecastle, the story of how the Arethusa fought was sung in deep-throated chorus. The fight was off the Frenchman's land, we forced them back upon their strand, for we fought till not a stick would stand of the gallant Arethusa. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Fighting Moose Podcast. Please join us next time as we read another exciting story. Today's music was provided by the artist Analog by Nature, and the audio clips were provided from NASA. For more information to download and or listen to audio or materials from all our recordings, or to contact us, please visit www.thefightingmoose.com, or You can follow the links in the show notes. If you enjoy the podcast, please leave us a review wherever you get your podcast or on iTunes and tell a friend. Thank you for your patronage, and as always, try and do a random act of kindness every day. Missing complete Houston. After uh, serving the world for over 30 years, the space shuttle turned its place in history. It's come to a final stop.